to Rochester was Valentine's Day. Erickson makes a save coming. I had a sting a little bit, but he makes the play. Comets keep it in. Here's a chance for Berchi in front, and the Comets score! It's Hunter Shinkarik again. His fifth straight game of the goal in Utica. out of Maine in his pro debut. Hutton with a shot, he scores! Oh, welcome to pro hockey! Ben Hutton gives the Comets a 2 nothing lead. Berchi goes to freeze it. Now Berchi one timer scores. It's a power play goal for Smith. Right side McKenzie at the line. His wrist shot is gloved and held by Comets killing a penalty here with half a minute to go. Back out of the line. Laduga shot tip. They score. A power play goal by the Riley into the zone. He's got Hunter Shinkara. Drops for Grenier. Shoots. He scores! It's a 4 1 lead for Utica. As the yeah! Freeze it. Looking for a path ahead. Got it through to Corey Conacher. Touched on. Here's Berchi in alone. Fakes backhand. Score! I thought we were good tonight. Uh, you know, our team was focused, uh, played a direct game. Uh, I thought we stuck with our game for the most part for 60 minutes. And uh, you know, I thought throughout our lineup, everyone played well. What did you say to Hutton or anything after the game? He scored his first goal in the first game. Uh, I con congratulated him on the bench, but I haven't had a chance to, uh, to talk to him. I'm going to hit him up here after we're done. But uh, I thought he played well tonight. It was nice to see him score. Uh, you can see he's got a lot of good attributes, and uh, you know I thought he did well tonight. Travis, what is the success you see after the, the slow start last year and, and gradual climb and success this year? Do you see any correlation to when you took over in Portland and you know did a well? A little bit. And, 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 I mean, it's a testament to your, your coaching, but um, do you see any kind of similarities? Oh, definitely a little bit. I mean, when when we went to Portland, we did things a certain way. Uh, had you know, whenever a new coach or new GM goes somewhere, they install what they believe in. Uh, you know, and hopefully it turns into a culture within an organization, which is you know, what we did in Portland. I, I felt it, the way we wanted to play became secondary nature, and the and and younger guys became older guys that taught younger guys how, how we wanted to play and you know I think last year we, we talked about it. it's a little bit different here because you're dealing with professional hockey players and but we had so many new guys last year uh, that it took a little while for our guys to I think gel together as a team and uh, probably play the way that I wanted us to play and and then over the course of the summer you know we got to bring back the guys that we really felt that were key parts to our team to carry on certain habits, certain trademarks within our team. So, uh, you know, you definitely try to build something and install a certain way that you want to play as, as a team. And, uh, you know, our, give our guys credit. They've, you know, they're a really good group to coach and they play really hard. Over the course of the season, from, from the start to now, the team is about. A lot of it's also been personnel changes and otherwise. Mm -hmm. You're at a point now where you're not letting your foot off the gas, all four lines, 60 minutes. Is that just part of the process? 
part of evolution or just personnel? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I think it's our players are honest. I think we've talked about owning their game all the time. Uh, we talk about a process within a season, within a game. And, uh, you know, in the middle part of this season, we really had a few times where we talked as a group and, and, and honestly talked. And, you know, our guys know when they're not good and they know how they have to play in order to be good. And, uh, you know, they know that if they play a certain style and, and well, a lot of it comes down to how hard they're willing to work. And, uh, you know, they're good hockey players, but in any league, if you don't match or if you don't outwork another team, you're, yeah. you're not going to win. But to follow up on that last question, is part of that evolution, it seems, that the team went from winning a lot of one-goal games to now dominating and putting teams away early, or at least you know, giving us a little bit more breathing room and not letting the other teams get closer? Is it the addition of skill at the trade oh, deadline that maybe gave us that little more offensive push? It's part of it. Obviously, adding Conacher and Barchi is, was a real good shot in the arm for us, but I think a lot of our players, you know, you got guys like Grenier, Shinkarik, uh, Gantz, Zaleski, like they've all, I think, stepped up their game as well in the last four to six weeks. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of change in teams in this league from the, the start of the year to the end of the year. And, and part of that is the development within your, within your players. And obviously there's trades that can happen as well. So, uh, you know, I think it's, it's a combination of a few things. Is it also partly that the new players came into a team where the team was winning and they believed in their system and was successful already and that makes it even easier for them to both perform their roles and be outstanding? Well, when you have new players uh, and you have good players, those guys can adapt. Good players can adapt to a, to a team, but I think a big part of why the players have played well since they've been traded here is a lot of credit goes to the guys in the locker room. Like, we have a good group of guys that allow players to come in and feel comfortable within themselves within the room and until you play on a on a team it's hard to understand that but if you're not comfortable in a locker room it's hard to be comfortable on the ice and play the way you want and i think that's one of our strengths as a, as a group is that we have good people in our room and uh they want to win uh they get along well and uh it's e it's easier for players whether they're young or guys have been in the league when they come to our team to to feel comfortable. Can you add a little more onto that and tell us who in particular and how are the, the really great guys in the locker room? Well, I think the new you know, our, our, our older guys are really good leaders. Uh, you know, I, I don't like to single out people. I, n I never have, but I think top to bottom we have, you know, we have great leaders. Uh, our young guys work hard. They're humble. Uh, you know, they don't, they work hard and don't step on toes, but they compete. and. Uh, you know, even with young guys, you got to have good, good older guys in your team to allow your young guys to be who they are without uh, making them feel, you know, like they're getting ahead of themselves. Um, I'm just a little curious about um, you sent out the second unit power play first. You said it was a second unit. I know, I know you were going to say that too. <laughs> yeah. but, but you hadn't sent those guys out first before that I can recall. I, I just wondered why. Uh, well, the big part was because a couple of our guys were on the ice and were tired. And, uh, you know, they scored early, so go back to them. There's a lot of guys on this team, right? Well, a couple of guys, not everybody on the team is in a hot streak right now. Shin Carrick, Grenier, O'Reilly, and Berici. These are guys who had tremendous marches, and now we're heading into April closer and closer towards the playoffs. How important is it to foster their streaks? And, and keep these guys being effective goal scorers and playmakers? Well, you know, I want them to... I, I don't worry about goals and assists and streaks and individual stuff. I never I never even look at that. Um, I just want them to play well. And for me, if they do the right things, the goals will come. Uh, I don't care about individual point streaks. Uh, but it is nice that we're getting production uh, throughout our lineup. And you're going to need that. The farther you go into a season... Uh, the more depth you need, and you need guys to contribute, and you're going to need everyone to contribute at some point in the other, in some way or another. And uh, I think that's the strength of our team. You guys come out healthy? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, from top to bottom, I think, you know, Travis and his staff has done a good job 
Um, you know, obviously we've seen our young players, uh, you know, take a step all, you know, and, and obviously in this environment, uh, playing, you know, in front of these great fans and having this facility here, I think is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a good setup. So, you know, we're excited for uh, the playoffs because I think that's where players learn, and, you know, adversity, uh, you know, confronts them, and that's where you see what players are made of. And I think it's good for for our group to go through that. I don't know if you're willing to share any names or anything, but uh, it's been a little while since you've been back in Utica and seen these guys. Yeah. Anybody that has caught your ride between then and now? Well, you know, I think just, I mean, obviously I talk to uh, Lauren Henning a lot. I talk to him every after every game, and, you know, so I feel like I'm a lot closer than I probably am. But, um <laughs> You know, I think just just to see the progression of certain guys. I mean, we saw Alex Biega come up and you know really contribute to our group, and uh, he, you know, I mean, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Jacob Markstrom is there now, and you know, Kennens has been has been real good, and and um, and then you know just on the development side, when you think of Shinkarik, he's taken a real step, and Gaunt since Christmas has really come on. Um, you know, Jens has been uh, he's been had a you know, grind it out a little more, but you know, so it's um, uh, you know, Andre Padan. I think Bombers working with him, and yeah. and you know, just trying to you know simplify his game. He's done a good job of that. So there's a lot of positives. And now you know, you look at um, you know Frankie Corrado's you know here and going to play meaningful minutes down the stretch in playoffs, and Adam Clendenning and. Um, uh, Sven is, uh, you know, I think, you know, reuniting him with Travis and getting him in an environment where he can have put some fun in the game again is, is going to be. So, I mean, there's lots of positives. I mean, you know, Alex Friesen and, you know, uh, you know, DeFazio and, you know, these guys are, you know, you know, Hamilton. I mean, you know, they just, we got a lot of quality people here. And, and when you have uh, a group that's, you know, committed and having fun and, and working hard, it's a, it's a good situation. Berkey and Conacher, when they came here, they've made such a difference so fast. Uh, is that something that you foreseen or a surprise? Yeah, I, we're not surprised. Obviously, get both, you know, we're kind of, we were kind of, you know, both of those uh, players kind of uh, met uh, some criteria we had and, and uh, added to what we're trying to accomplish here. So. They've done a good job uh, integrating in, and it's been a good fit. And you know, it's really rounded out the team down here for sure. Was that specific goal and intent to add more offense? Well, there was uh, definitely. Uh, uh, you know, we've been looking for to add some pieces all year uh, offensively. Um, this group has always worked extremely hard, and I think uh, allowing them to score easier if you will you know what I mean not have to work so hard to score and I think that they've got more finish in their lineup now and you know you combine that with uh, the grit and some of the character they have on their other lines it's a it's a real good mixer it seems like exactly the goals you set out to meet are being met right now so it seems like you would rate all three of those moves a success which uh, yeah I mean I think um, Every team needs a, uh, you know, a, a, the right mix, and uh, I think we have it here. So uh, it's going to be exciting finish the season, and uh, like I said earlier, playoffs is a time where uh, it's the most important time of the year, and and where little things matter the most, and that's that's what it's all about. How important is it that the Comets organization do well in the postseason? How beneficial would that be for the overall? Vancouver Canucks organization? Well, like I said, I think when players have the opportunity to perform in the playoffs where, uh, where all the little things you do in your game matter, when you look at the development of players and, and the growth of their, uh, it's, it's real important. And uh, so uh, that's, a, that's a time of year where um, you want your players involved in, and, and this, is, uh, this is right where, yeah, that's why we're excited. Trevor, I know you, you addressed this when you were here the last time, but you know the big, the big question about Vancouver that the fans always have is, are they going to be here next year? Are they going to yeah. be here two yeah. or three years from now? What can yeah. we do? 
Yeah, we're going to be here next year, no question. We're going to be here the year after. So, um, you know, this is, I've, I've always said, the fact that um, people care here and our players like playing here, I've, I've just spent, you know, the last, you know, you talk to them, they love playing here. People care. It's a great facility. It's a great atmosphere. Um, that's super important to us. And and the proximity uh, that, that this team is with their competition is important as well. That they have, uh, you know, the amount of practice time that they need uh, is, is important. So Robert Ash has done a tremendous job with his organization and, and uh, we couldn't be happier. So it's been a good, a good setup for us. People constantly talk, to follow up on John's question, they constantly talk about the distance between Vancouver and Utica, but the distance between Vancouver and some of these California cities is pretty long ways as well. Yeah. Are people tending to overrate or overemphasize this whole flying distance thing? Well, I think the biggest thing is, the most important thing is is the proximity of the team with to their competition. So, you know, uh, that's... If you can bust a couple hours and you're, you can hit six or seven different teams, that's important. Uh, you know, you, more rest, more time to work out, more practice time. The biggest challenge is just the distance from Vancouver. And not, not it's just from people like myself and Jim to be able to get to see the players. And so that, that's a bit of a challenge. Um, but there's a lot of positives that outweigh that. Uh, and we're on the road half the time, so if we need a player, who knows where we are? Uh, we're out east. Uh, we're out this way. It hasn't been a problem, you know. Players getting back and forth. So, uh, you know, we're this is this is a pretty special place to play. It's a special environment, uh, you know. So we're not we're we're pretty happy. Last nice question. Um, just quickly, what's the status on Ryan Miller? Just so we can yep. expect when yep. Jacob Markstrom might be back. <laughs> yeah. <the> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ryan is skating on his own. He's taking shots uh, with our injured guys. I would expect he may join the team sh soon. Practice uh, as far as return to play. You know, that's once he joins the team, it's kind of who knows. Um, so he's he's probably a couple weeks away yet. Thank you. <laughs> You've had a, a quick start here. Made a big impact. What, what was it, because uh, you know, we don't know what it's like when you get traded in different organizations. How, how comfortable, tra uh, Travis was just talking about, we, it's a very comfortable locker room, the guys get to feel comfortable right away. What, what's the transition been like for you away from the ice that we don't see? Uh, it's been awesome. You know what, like uh, the day I got here, I think I really, you know, got accepted into the group right away. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, that's one thing you, I didn't have to deal with, so I could just focus on hockey. and. So in the end, um, you know, the, the guy's been great to me. And so that's, that's pretty much everything I needed here. And, you know, in the end, the, uh, you know, the game's going to, you know, speak for itself. Have you, since Trevor Linden is here, have you had the opportunity to speak with him? And if so, what, what did you guys talk about? Oh, I haven't actually, I haven't seen him at all. Um, I was talking to, to Jim Benning, though, after the game. And, um, yeah, he's excited that, you know, the team has been playing well and that we're, that we're in the role right now. <clears throat> since you since you've joined this team, you have been a, a big part of, of the Comets play. You're on the power play. Your line regularly is doing well. Do you, is it just coming into this facility and, and playing with Travis Green, a guy you're you're familiar with? Is that what's helping you, or is it just from leaving Van, uh, Adirondack to coming here? Has it just been now is your time to shine? Well, I think. You know, for me, it's always been the same. That's the kind of player I am. I'm, you know, I have to perform on a power play. I have to perform, uh, uh, you know, five and five. It doesn't matter when. And so, um, you know, what what happened here is that you know I'm surrounded by some really really skilled players and and a team that's been successful all year and that's that's on a roll now and that's been doing really well. And so in the end, um, you know, it's great that I get the points, but you know, it's all because the guys. You know, here have been have been great all year. They they're all about offense here, and so that I think that's that's just huge help for you know getting points and everything. How did, how did you find out you were traded coming here, and what what was it like? I, I assume you drove down here from Glens Falls. What, what were you thinking about? 
Not too much. I mean, I was on the phone for uh, I think six hours straight after I got traded, and uh, you know, it happened out around 3:15 in the afternoon where I got the call and I heard that I got traded, and so pretty much just went home, packed up my stuff, and I left. And there wasn't much time for me to really settle in or uh, really think about it because I was on the phone the whole time. But um, you know, later on, as I you know, before I went to went to sleep, I you know had some time to really let it sink in and everything and you know it's quite a unique day you know you're kind of nervous all day and then if something happens then you know you got to react right away we you know you got to leave right away but uh, uh for me it was easy enough to just you know go home pack up my stuff and drive here and that drive from, uh, from albany to utica did you have any expectations you'd be driving into the kind of chemistry that you got on this line with uh, with conacher and treason I mean, uh, for me, it was just, you know, getting here and getting used to what's, what their expectations are here and getting used to the system and everything. I wasn't thinking too much about um, who I'm going to play with or if it's going to work or not. And I wasn't thinking about that. I was just, you know, my first practice, I just came here and felt right away. I felt, um, you know, with the pace the guys play here, I fit in just perfectly. And so, um, you know, I've been on different lines, but right now, you know, our line... You know, obviously, he's been doing some some damage out there, and we've been feeling some uh, some chemistry for sure. You said you were on the phone for six hours. Who were you speaking to? If I could ask. Oh, all kinds of people. You know, key people from Calgary media, and of course, my my family that saw it right away too. And uh, uh, you know, tons of people. And actually, at that day, my my phone, my uh, Canadian phone, was actually kind of broken. So every phone call that came in was, it just said unknown. So I had no idea who was on the other side, and yeah, even the, the the call I got from Bradshaw Living, you know, I had no idea it was him. It, said, it just said unknown, and then I picked up and I heard it, heard his voice. Mm -hmm. uh, Sven, what in general the team? You're eight eight in a row here, not, uh, what is it? Uh, eight zero oh, and one something like that. But in any yeah. case, uh, a really good streak. In general, what, what is the team doing well? I think we just play our game, you know, I think we play Utica hockey and uh, we're sticking with it. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what happens throughout the game, if we're down by a goal, you know, if we're up by, you know, two, three goals, we, we seem to uh, keep playing the same way. Um, you know, it's a 60-minute process and I think that's that's huge for us right now. We we just keep playing, it doesn't matter what what's happening, it's just if there's a minute left, of the game, we're up by a few few goals. It doesn't matter. We still play the same way. If we're down, it's still the same way. Compared to Adirondack, a team who we're watching tonight to help us secure a playoff spot, what's the difference between the styles of play here as opposed to there? Well, what I felt in, you know, I think in the, in the Flames organization, lots of times, uh, it's really just um, a north-south game. I think. Uh, you know, there's a lot of grind in the game, and um, you know, it's, I think that's the biggest difference. You know, here we're trying to find a way how, how we can get the puck into their zone without turning it over and without chipping it in, uh, and we always seem to find a way. And so it's more about <clears throat> puck possession here and less about uh, less about the forecheck, I would say. And, and to bring up the puck possession, because a lot of people like to get the shoot chant during the uh, power play. But for, for those who aren't familiar with the actual game of hockey, how important is it to maintain composure with the puck in a, a five-on-four situation? You know, there's, I think there's times where you got to find a way to shoot, but there's also times where you got to be patient and, you know, maybe hold on to it and not, uh, not think shot sometimes. And it's just a feel, you know, you just got to feel the game. You got to know, you know, you got to know the score. You got to know the time. And, and you know that that's gonna influence your decision. You're either gonna shoot or you or you make you're gonna make a play and try to find a better play or, or whatever. But you know it's just just I guess uh, you know more of hockey sense, feeling the game out, and then make a decision from there.